Good morning. We begin with welcoming those of you who are in the drive-in congregation. If you can hear me, blink your lights or do something. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. I, I see you waving. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our worship begins with hymn number 311, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
An academic hood is often worn under the scarf. Morning prayer begins with a call to worship in the form of one or more of the sentences taken from Holy Scripture. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Following the open se opening sentence, the efficient, facing the congregation, reads the exhortation of to confession. The longer form being used in today's service sets forth the goals of worship, to come together in the presence of God with thanksgiving and praise, to hear his word, to offer our prayers, to confess our sins, and with penitent hearts to receive God's forgiveness. The confession which follows is called general because it is for the whole congregation. In it we call ourselves miserable offenders, not because we feel miserable at any given moment, but because our condition as human beings is such that there is a force or weight always pulling us downward, and we are unable to do anything about it. We therefore cry out for God's help and mercy. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying unto me, Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from thy grace like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, and in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Having confessed our sins, the minister is able to state authoritatively that what God has promised, God has done. The minister does not forgive sin, God does. But it is in accordance with his office to make such a declaration. See John chapter 20, verse 23. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not to the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and love, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his holy spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that in the lost, we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having received assurance that God has forgiven our failures, we are now prepared to pray our Lord's great kingdom prayer.
addressing God as our Father, we pray that his sovereign rule will be acknowledged on earth, beginning with this little bit of earth called me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Versicles are a series of sentences said or sung of alternatively by the minister and people. Christian worship is not a spectator sport. Everyone is a player. O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy grace. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, be your face to help us. Stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Nighty, Latin, O Come, is one of the three canticles known as songs of praise, said or sung in morning prayer. It is a jubilant summons to the world of nature and man to worship its creator. The Venite, as printed in the prayer book, comes largely from Psalm 95. <laughs> Psalm 65. 
Thou, O God, art praised in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed in Jerusalem. Thou that hearest the prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Minus these prevail against thee, O be thou merciful unto our sins. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest, and receivest unto thee. He shall dwell in thy court, and shall be satisfied with the pleasures of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Thou shalt show us wonderful things in thy righteousness, O God of our salvation. Thou that art the hope of all the ends of the earth, and of them that remain in the broad sea. Who in his strength setteth past the mountains, and is carried about with power? Who stilleth the raging of the sea, and the noise of his waves, and the madness of the peoples? They also that dwell in the heavenless parts of the earth shall be afraid at thy tokens. Thou that makest the outgoings of the morning and the evening praise thee. Thou visitest the earth and blessest it. Thou makest it very plenteous. The river has its full of water. Thou preparest their corn, for so thou provides for the earth. Thou waterest her furrows, thou sendest rain into the little valleys thereof. Thou makest it salt with the drops of rain, and blessest it, blessest the increase of it. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and in thy clouds draw friends. They shall drop upon the dwellings of the wilderness, and the little hills shall rejoice on every side. The folk shall be full of sheep, and the valleys also shall stand safely before, that they shall laugh and sing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is generally taken from the Old Testament, the written record of God's acts leading up to the coming of Jesus. lesson is followed by a second canon. Today, the Indian waters. In Latin, we praise the O God is being used. The hymn has its origins in the fourth century. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All oh, the earth now worship thee, the Father and the to thee, O angels, fall thou the heavens and all the powers therein. To, to thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually we cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise 
things believed by Christians going back to the time of the apostles and began as a baptismal confession of faith. Its title is first found in a letter of St. Ambrose uh, around 390 A.D. I believe in God. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness 
all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those whose names are listed in the day of sheep. But it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thank the worthy servants who give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the Well, happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers and to the rest of you. Good morning. We're glad you're here and it's wonderful to see all of you and we know that there are some we have out in the uh, uh, parking lot and we again welcome you. We're glad you're here and we have some in the pavilion. We're glad you're out there and we have people online and we welcome you. We're so happy you're with us today uh, as we um, do an instructed uh, morning prayer and sermon. Uh, some people won't know morning prayer because it has been, uh, uh, has fallen on hard times as it were in the church. Well, not only because of the pandemic here, but in the church at large, but for many years throughout, uh, well, for almost as, uh, going back to the Reformation and, and in this country, morning prayer and sermon was a staple Sunday for most Sundays. And uh, it's important that we understand and appreciate all the services that are found in the prayer book. And this is a service that uh, focuses on the word. It's very similar to evening prayer. And so um, uh, love your prayer book and be acquainted with, the, with all, of your, all the services in the prayer book. And to that end, we are continuing on Teaching Tuesdays to do just that. This week, Pat Deering, uh, who we always look forward to hearing from, is going to be doing a session on the Bible and uh, ordination, the laying on of hands of those who are being set apart as ministers of the gospel. And, and also, he's going to be looking at the laying on of hands of the sick sometimes called unction. Now, if you haven't come to Teaching Tuesdays, this, this is your big opportunity. It's, uh, we meet at t uh, 11.30 on Wednesdays, and then we usually go out, a group goes out to eat. So it's, uh, it's more than just uh, uh, learning, it's fellowship, and I guarantee you, you will have a good time. On Tuesday. 
Tuesday. Tuesday, did I say Tuesday? Tuesday, it's teaching Tuesday at 11.30. Now, if you cannot be with us physically, we have good news for you. On Wednesday, we do a, a Zoom session, and uh, please join us. It starts at 6 o'clock on Wednesday, the Zoom session, and we'll be sending out those codes this week on Monday, or if you don't get one, call the church office and we'll be sure that you are sent one. Uh, this is a wonderful study, and this is, uh, we have one more in our series. We've been looking at the Bible and Holy Communion, the Bible and baptism. Now we're going to be looking, the following week, we have uh, uh, Roger Johnson, the head of our education committee, we call him the education, our education czar, is going to be doing a very informative uh, talk, presentation on the Bible and evangelism. It's called tactics. It's how to share your faith with others without making yourself obnoxious or being, uh, being wise uh, communicators of the gospel. When people ask you, being able to tell them something meaningful and in a hopeful sort of way. And we're looking forward to both of these studies, and I do hope that you will be a part of both. So again, we welcome you today on this Mother's Day. Uh, this, uh, because we have, have uh, been in, we've only had Holy Communion for the last over a year, uh, we're also offering Holy Communion at the very end of this service for anyone who wants to stay behind. We'll have a hymn, and I'll go to the back door. If you want, to, if you need to leave, please leave uh, at that time. But you're also invited to just stay where you are, and then you, we'll serve you Holy Communion uh, from those uh, elements, those, the bread and wine that, that were consecrated uh, at the earlier service of this morning. So that's all in your a pew sheet, so please uh, uh, join us for that. Stay behind if you can. Um, I thank those who have signed up for flowers. We still have some days in later on this year. Take a look at that and see if you can help us, if you will. Uh, we stand and sing another hymn, our sermon hymn, hymn 101, which is the rogation hymn about harvest and the crops and agriculture. O oh, Jesus crowned with all renown. <laughs>
offspring and my Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Once we had a 12th night celebration here at St. Luke's. The young people were in charge. 12th night, if you're not familiar with the term, refers to the last day in the Christmas season. In any case, it was decided that each child would bring a dish or food representative of a particular country. Before we ate, one by one, the children stood up and said something about the, their offering. One, for example, proudly held up a Christmas pudding and said, this is a steamed pudding containing raisins and currants. It comes from Great Britain. When he was finished, another child held up a bowl and said, this is sauerkraut. It comes from Germany and is often eaten not only at Christmas, but throughout the year, especially in the winter months. This went on for a while. Finally, the last child came forward, a little boy. He pointed to a platter and said, this is a honey-baked ham. It came from Marietta. <laughs> The children were right in saying where these various foods came from, but only so far. Rogation Sunday, which we are, we are observing today, takes us one step further. It calls us to look beyond the country of origin of a dish or where we bought a particular food item to the giver of all things to God himself. On occasion, a portion of 1 Chronicles 29, 14 is used as part of a blessing over food. The verse goes, For all things come of thee, O Lord. These words remind us to look up before our forks and knives go down onto our plates. God is our source. He sends the sunshine and rain. He has put into seeds a genetic code and the power to burst forth into new life. He has given men the, the knowledge and skill to plant, harvest, and distribute foodstuff. On Rogation Sunday, we acknowledge God as our source and ask God to continue his gracious provision to bless the farmer, the livestock, and the land. Rogation, by the way, comes from a Latin word, rogari, meaning to ask. So asking is the focus of today's service. But we have another focus as well today, haven't we? It's Mother's Day. That reminds me. At last week's Bible study, which happened to be on marriage and the family, someone, I think it was Jean Allen, shared some quotes from children. Quotes she had found on the internet. Yes, kids still cite the darndest things. The one that got the most chuckles came from a nine-year-old girl who said, it's okay for girls to be single, but boys need a wife because they need someone to pick up after them. No doubt she had some brothers and had watched what her mother did. Of course, of course, wives and mothers are more than picker-uppers. The American poet William Ross Wallace rightly observed well over a century ago, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. So on this Sunday, we ask not only God's blessings on farmers, the land, livestock, and crops, but on mothers, wives, homes, and America. But let's not stop there. 
bring, by all means, bring before God anything that is on your heart and mind this morning. At this point, you might want to pause and identify one or more objects of prayer. By all means, be specific. Don't pray in generalities. And remember, no request is too large or too small for God. No, the God Jesus invites us to call Father is concerned with the totality of human life. Jesus makes this clear in the 16th chapter of St. John's Gospel when he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Underscore, if you would, that word whatsoever. But if, does that mean that God always answers our prayers in the exact way we frame our requests and according to our timetable? No, of course not. Experience has shown us as much. Many of you will have seen the 1983 film A Christmas Story. In it, a young boy by the name of Ralphie asks his parents for a red, wider BB gun. They tell him no, and they tell him why. You may well shoot out one of your eyes. You're too young. Not satisfied with this answer, he takes this request to a teacher at school and gets told the exact same thing. No, you may shoot out one of your eyes. You're not old enough. Still not satisfied, he takes it to a department store, Santa. What does he tell him? The same thing his parents and teacher, ha teacher had told him. No, you may shoot out one of your eyes. On Christmas morning, he opens his presents, but finds no gun. Of course he is disappointed, but then his father points him in the direction of one last package. To his great delight, it contains his much coveted Red Ryder BB gun. And what does he do with it? He takes it outside, shoots it at a target mounted on a metal sign, and a BB bounces back in his direction, hits his glasses, knocking them off, Thankfully, his eye was unscathed, both of them unscathed. All of which to say, our Father in heaven is like that parent. Sometimes he says no, and in his case, he generally sticks to it. Why? Because he doesn't love us? No, precisely because he does love us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our foibles and weaknesses. His no is a better yes. And then sometimes he says wait. Again, it is not because he does not love us or because he is stingy, miserly, uncaring. Often, it is because he has something better in mind for us. Waiting brings this about. Let me give you one example from my own personal experience. A year or so after this church was founded, I remember sitting one evening on the stone wall at the rear of the churchyard, the stone wall around the 1903 cemetery. It was autumn, and I could hear the band playing in the distance at a home football game. At that time, nothing had been built. All I saw were trees and a vacant lot. As I sat there, I tried to imagine what a church would look like on this spot. 
the image I had in mind was actually quite modest and minimal. Because I wanted it to happen now, I dreamed small, exceedingly small. I asked God for this small model. And what did God do? He said, wait, it would not be until 1995 that the first portion of this building would be built. And when it was, it was much grander than anything that I could imagine back in the 80s. And of course, it became grander still 10 years ago when we added the side transepts and, and the choir. We, you see, think in increments of days and years. God in eternity. He is doing for us better things than we can desire or pray for, even when we are not aware of it. I am reminded of the words of an old hymn, Be not dismayed, whate'er befalls, God will take care of you. He will. Let him not be your, just your co-pilot, but your pilot, the one in charge. Don't try to get ahead of God, or for that matter, don't linger behind when he opens a door of opportunity. When he does that, go through that door. Trust him for your daily bread and for everything else. <clears throat> Again, I ask, what do you need this morning? What are your desires at this time? What are your dreams, not just for yourself, but for others, for the world? Don't keep those desires and dreams to yourself. Bring them to the one Jesus teaches us to call Father. The word for today is ask. It is a Bible word. One that comes straight from the lips of the Lord Jesus. Make it your word. Charlie Pride, a country musician from Mississippi, back in 1971, brought to the fore an old gospel song that had almost been forgotten. The title of this song was, Don't Forget to Pray. It topped the charts for 33 weeks. What was so ironic and gratifying was that Pride, a black man, found himself being embraced by many who still harbored racial prejudice. They may not have liked him, but they loved his song and they loved his singing. And so he became quite popular as a result. The words he sang 50 years ago remain true and relevant today. And with them, I close. Ere you left your room this morning, did you think to pray? In the name of Christ our Savior, did you sue for loving favor as a shield today? And then the chorus. Oh, how praying rests the weary. Prayer will change the night today. So when life seems dark and dreary, don't forget to pray. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, be ascribed the this most just as you, all life, majesty, dominion, power, and glory, the world without end. Amen. Amen. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. I would remind those of you who are 